Hey, we're excited. Uh, that's Chris Anderson. I'm Chris Manti. You don't have to be a Chris at all to be here. Uh, <laughs> we love you the same. Uh, End Time Church is what this is. And you're the church. He's the church. I'm the church. Whoever is a believer in Jesus and is following him has, has proclaimed our loyalty to him, has, 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 has repented of our sin and said, you, Jesus, you paid my fine. I'm out of here. Uh, that's, that's us. That's the family. And so blessings to you. Please say hello. If you're there, like bond server just did. Hello. Hello friend. <laughs> uh, and by the way, see the crawl below for all the relevant information. You can pray at any point, just text that number and, uh, text pray to that number. And you can tell us what you need prayer for. We can do that right away. We'll get notification even, even better. I think is to use the end time church app. There's a prayer group right in there. Everyone in the group gets notified instantly when anything is put in there, including this morning, by the way. Uh, one of our brothers um, had a, a family member pass away, and th- this is just why it's there. So it's an awesome um, tool for you to use to that uh, to that end and for anything you need prayer for. So either way, whatever, we want to give you chances, opportunities to, to facilitate all kinds of communication among the body of christ that's why we're here including including uh felines well i think he almost jumped in the screen there chris that's awesome it was a dog not a feline <laughs> i love it i'm sorry i love dogs um i do they don't all love me uh-huh. but i do like them smaller the better she might not... jump in my lap at some point who knows that's that's cool as long as you're not playing a song or something uh, which we don't need because uh, Sister Taryn has provided a beautiful rendition tonight. We will get to that in a in a few moments. But if you do have any kind of comment, question, concern, or prayer request, especially, please put that in right now, wherever you're watching, YouTube, Facebook, even Twitter. If you're watching on my personal channels, uh, I won't be able to see it, but I'll get to it later. Promise you that. And if obviously you're in the app, it's broadcasting live there um, as well. So please make your requests known. Do appreciate that. Uh, merchandise is ready, the, including this. Yeah, there it is. The new shirt. That's right. Uh, tribulation ready? Question mark. Got a lot, a lot of good feedback on it. Only a couple naysayers. So that's a good ratio, as they say. Uh, we do want to just put it out there. In fact, somebody from um, Germany this week says, hey, um, do you ship to Germany? I'm like, I think so. So we use a third party printer at all. Nobody gets uh, makes a lot of money on the situation, but you get it fast uh, and it's easy. So we did it and we worked it out where now even Germany and Europe, as we know for a fact, can get the items shipped right to them. It's pretty awesome uh, because the church does need to like, talk about this thing. <laughs> right? We do need to talk about it. Uh, and there's a prayer request from Marion. We will get to that, sir. Uh, for sure in in a few minutes so thanks for the patience there and we will get to the message tonight which is end time prepping continues this is really not this is not a big plan this just keeps happening the lord bubbles things up you know how it goes pastor uh these things just keep coming and the lord has got a little more for us me included um and this is about judging outside the church what business is it of ours as Paul would say. So it's a very, I was always fascinated by that comment. And so um, I think it's for us. I think we need to really kind of nail that down. Um, And obviously the world is, is growing darker. We don't, we, you are not totally blind. Anyone with eyes can see uh, that this, this place is getting rough out here, but aren't we called to be the light? And that doesn't ever change. So hopefully we'll get to the bottom of that tonight. Membership in End Time Church. We don't want you just to watch something on YouTube or, or whatever on your feeds. No, we want to connect with you. We want to be the body of Christ together. We want to uh, help you launch your home fellowship, whether it be digitally or in person, just like folks have done. We want to help you in that. You saw at the beginning of the broadcast here, uh, homechurchinitiative.com. Please visit that. Fill out the form and we'll get with you. We'll send you free resources. We'll avail ourselves to assist. And that's really on uh, Mr. Anderson's heart for sure. It's not both of ours, but this is his wheelhouse, 100%. He's definitely ready and willing to assist. So utilize that. 
Okay. <laughs> Obey what you hear. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to uh, have some wisdom there. Sorry. Oh, I got, I got stuff, but it's, we, we don't got time. Right. Don't have time for no, none of that. Uh, the music is available as well. Did you know Taryn has a whole album out there to read the book of Revelation with? Again, that's End Time Church slash merch or just click merch in the app. Music is there as well as the shirts and stuff like that. And finally, courses and training classes are also available 100% free of charge. Everything there is for all of y'all to take. If you're interested in, like I said, membership, there's a class to go through. It spells out exactly who we are, what we are, what we believe, what the plan is, what the vision is, what the mission is, how we're going to get there, what the expectations are from members, what the expectations are from those who are volunteering to lead this thing, what all that. See exactly what you're getting into, and hopefully it's not uh, onerous. It's certainly not, I don't think. It's just saying, hey, this is what we're about. Sign your name here if you want in. And then do the church thing. Serve, serve the body of Christ together. Put your talents into the mix. That's what we do. Okay. It's very important that you would agree to those things, you know, because membership, look, we're, we're coming together with a common idea, a common thought, a common faith, a common belief. And you want to partner yourself with those people who have that common faith, that common concepts. It doesn't mean you have to agree on every little point. I mean, there's room for disagreement. We have civil conversations and discourses regarding those things, but we want you to agree to the fundamental aspects of what we believe and teach here at End Time Church to become a member. That's that. Simple as that. Simple as that. So we do want you to be involved. Go take that class. And at the end of it, you get a certificate. Say, yep, I'm a member. I signed it. Here it is. It's official. You get a little badge in our app and all that stuff. So please go ahead and take that. And that's not the only thing we offer in the training section. You've got First of all, what end time views are there? Number one, what do these guys believe? We spell it out exactly. So there's no confusion. It's not a long class, but it's very helpful if you are if you have any questions about any of that stuff, uh, about what we teach and what the views are. It's all in there. There's a class called the Spirit of Truth uh, from a dear brother, uh, Tim Gill. Put this together a few years ago. It's really in depth about, well, the Spirit of Truth and the Holy Spirit and what he means by that and why we have to grab on to it. Uh, and then the most recent one that we just added here a week or so ago is called Clean. Uh, it's by another minister who wants it to be spread out everywhere, and he wants a million men to take it because it's about issue that, for example, New Testament mentions constantly, which is sexual integrity, uh, especially from the men. You know, this is just the way it goes, and we need to be there. So this, if you have ever, ever, ever been an issue with you, Look, you're not weird, okay? It's it's just it happens all the time, everywhere, every nation. Um, go through the class. It is ext- I did. It's extremely, extremely good, very practical, extremely practical, very, very helpful, definitely from the Lord. So go ahead and go through that. Don't be ashamed. We'll talk about it. There's a men's discipleship group attached to that and all of that. Okay. That is it. That is it. And then uh we'll get to the message tonight after we pray for the folks so if you've got anything else on your mind please feel free to put it in there and that's that and so let's get to worshiping god shall we yep and then i will come back and pray together and then we'll get to the message that yep. sounds like a good deal to me uh and again please share hey the easiest thing in the world if this just hit the share button right there just hit, go ahead share it right now please don't tell me you did it just do it it doesn't matter we don't have to know nothing just it's it's enough that you cared enough to share because sharing is caring we like like. We love loves. Don't want to keep scrolling. Definitely don't want that. We want to share. Share. You never know who's going to see it, friends. I don't care if you think you got no acquaintances and no networks. You do. You really do. Truly. And especially if you're in any type of ministry uh, in this world of, of the digital world at all. Yeah. It is a big reach that you can accomplish. All right. Anyway, so let's get into the worship time now uh, with Taryn's original creation, and we'll be back in just a minute to pray together. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Taryn, for the worship music tonight. I pray that it was a blessing to the Father. Um, always it's a blessing to hear such unique and heartfelt compositions. So I want to go ahead and we're going to open up in prayer requests. But before we do, I'm not sure if we talked on this during the opening, but if this ministry has been a blessing to you in any way, shape or form, um, we'd ask that you would be willing to consider giving a financial offering into this ministry. Uh, you can go to endtime.church slash give where you can do that or on the app. There is a button on there to give. Uh, we would certainly appreciate any financial support that you're willing uh, to sow into this fertile ground of uh, Time Church. Um, of course, if you're a member and you've gone to the member class, you know where your finances are going and how we're continuing to advance the gospel and the cause of Christ uh, all over the world through this online forum. So it's not too late. We're going to start praying. I'm going to actually start with prayer, prayer in the app, and then we're going to move to what has been uh, posted on YouTube. Looks like we just have a couple of YouTube submissions uh, to pray over. And then we're going to pray over the message, then we're getting right into it. So, Father, we come boldly before the throne of grace today, God, with prayer and petition, Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts. God, we lift you up and bless your name, God, for you are worthy of all of our praise, Lord. You are worthy of all of our adoration. Uh, Lord, we bless you, God. We thank you, Lord, for being who you are, that you are our Father, you are our God, you are our King. We thank you, God, that you have called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. We thank you, God, that we were once not a people, but you have called us to be a people. We thank you, God, that we were once not a nation, but you've called us to be a nation. You've called us to be royal priests, royal kings and royal queens, Lord. A priesthood to you, Father. I thank you, God, that, Lord, your promises are yes and amen. I thank you, God, that you have made us the head and not the tail. I thank you, God, that you've made us the apple of your eye by grafting us in to the commonwealth of Israel. Lord, I just want to lift up these prayer requests tonight, uh, requests coming in from your people, Father. I just want to lift up Dan right now and his family uh, with his father having passed away just very recently, days ago. Lord, uh, he's asking for prayer for his wife, Kathy, Lord. So we just lift up Kathy as well, as, as well as his sister, Emma. Lord God, we lift up Emma and Kathy right now to you, God. I pray, God, that you would reveal yourself to them. Uh, Lord, Kathy as an atheist and Emma, most likely agnostic, calls herself a Christian, but unsure. Lord God, I just ask that you would reveal yourself to them in the, in the, in the midst of this tragedy. Uh, through the love and compassion of someone who is your disciple. Lord, that they would feel your compassion. They would feel your feel your joy, Lord, even in the midst of pain, God. We know that darkness lasts just for the night, God, but joy comes in the morning, God. And I just ask that you would begin to reveal a joy to them, Lord. But more than anything, God, I just ask that they would come to know you, truly know you as Lord and Savior through this through this event, through this loss, Lord. And even though Dan says he's, he's okay and doing fine right now, Lord, it's, it's, it's very hard for us to lose our father. God, I've been there. It's not something that we can get over quickly. Um, it's, it's always going to be there. Lord, I just ask that you would continue to be with Dan and Lord, encourage him, strengthen him. I pray that he would find support and encouragement right here at End Time Church uh, from fellow members, Lord, not only from the pastor, uh, the pastors here, but the the fellow members, God, that people just come alongside of him and lift him up. And even though he might not be feeling discouraged right now or, or troubled in any way necessarily, God, that he would still feel lifted up and cared for, Lord, here at this church. God, I also want to lift up. Uh, I just want to lift up Laura. Lord, I thank you, God, for this praise report five days ago that the test results from wearing her heart monitor for two weeks have come back normal. I thank you, God, that you continue to bring healing and restoration to her body, uh, which had suffered from this stroke, Lord. God, I just ask that you would continue to strengthen her physically, uh, emotionally, continue to draw her closer to you, Lord. Um you know, Laura has such, been a, such a blessing, not only to myself, Lord, but to this ministry as well. And I know to all those around her, God. And so I just thank you for her. I thank you for 
you know, placing her at End Time Church, that you, you led her here. I just thank you, God, that uh, she is who she is, Lord, and that is a sold-out, dedicated child of the Most High God. I thank you for that, Lord. And I just ask, God, that you would just continue to encourage her and strengthen her. Lord, just lift up all those affected by these wildfires in Canada and things of that nature that's going on and, and some of the health difficulties, even from these plumes of smoke that's that's wafting into you know, populated areas here in the States, as well as I'm in Canada, God, that I just pray, God, that you would just bring a quick resolution to that situation, to the fires, Lord, that uh, God, you'd send a rain. I know there's rain coming up on the East Coast now of the U.S. I just pray that that goes all the way up into Canada, God, and begins to, to quench the fires uh, that are raging up there. Father, I just want to lift up uh, Maranon's request, Lord, you you see the changes, Lord, that uh, that lay ahead of them. God, you see our future. You know what's there. You, you know the decisions that Maranon's going to make. So I just ask right now that, Lord, you begin to prepare him to make those decisions, prepare him, uh, Lord, to face what he's going to face. I thank you, God, that you don't put more on us than we are capable of handling, God. Uh, but I just ask, God, that you would prepare him mentally, spiritually, and physically for what lies ahead. Lord, change is just a part of life. We are always going to deal with change, God, but some of us deal with it harder than others, Lord. Some of us are not necessarily prepared. I just ask, God, that that's not the case uh, with Maranon. Lord, all the unspoken prayer requests that are, that are out there that are not coming through, Lord God, you know what they are. You know the hearts of your children here. You know the requests we all have. So I just ask you being to move in those situations according to your will. God, if it's for healing, I ask that you would bring healing. If your word declares that by your stripes we were healed, God, if it's for salvation of a lost loved one or a friend or anything of that nature, God, that I, pr I pray that you would stir in whomever that request is from, God, to be a light in a dark place that draws these lost loved ones and family to you. Lord, if it's for, you know, jobs or finances, the loss of a job, you know, trying to look for a new one or for finances, God, I pray that God that you would bring that provision, whatever it may be, that it would come at the right moment at the right time. Well, whatever the prayer requests may be, you, God, you know them all. I just ask that you begin to move according to your will. And Father, as Pastor Manti gets ready to come on and bring the word tonight, God, I pray that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying to the church tonight. Help us to be doers of the word and not hearers alone. And Father, if there's anybody here tonight that does not know you as their Lord and Savior and is not following you as a disciple, I pray, God, that tonight they would not end the service and leave the service without coming to faith in you, placing their full trust in in your son, Jesus, and committing to picking up their cross and following you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. For your word declares where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. Welcome, Jesus. Have your way. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome, Jesus, indeed. Oh, Father, thank you for this awesome team you've assembled, saints, just regular folks who, who love you. We seek to know you better. You are our sustainment. You are our food and drink indeed. Anyway, we just we love you and honor you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Okay. <clears throat> As you can see, we see ourselves. Uh as a forerunning, spirit-led, multicultural, multi-background online church. And we want to impact the world because the Lord told us to do this through discipleship and church planting, whether that be digital or house churches. And we want to connect with you no matter where you are in the world and no matter what your background is. Even through the suffering to come that we will proclaim as one, Maranatha, come Lord, come Lord Jesus. Amen. All right past couple of weeks we've been on a tear here uh end time prepping and um 
like a lot of folks uh, feel the need to do it, or uh, but are really maybe conflicted or hear conflicting messages about how one goes about such a thing. <laughs> how does one prepare for the end times? Oh man, it's so scary and daunting and overwhelming and and right isn't it all like the movies show us and death and destruction and 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 it's all bad and negative and all that stuff well like always if if we're christians if we actually follow the god of israel and his son jesus the messiah you must be asking the first thing out of our mouth should be what does god say right what does god's word have to say about this what is the Spirit of God saying? Um, sometimes he said it a long time ago, okay? Most of the time, most every time, uh, he said it a long time ago, and it's just for us to unearth it, if you will, to dig it out, um, because it's all there. And as, uh, I'm fond of saying the more you understand, the easier it is. It's not complex. It's God is definitely... You may disagree, but my experience is he is not trying to fool us. He's not trying to um, confuse us for sure, because he's not the God of confusion. He's not a deceiver, so he's not trying to fool you. He's not trying to mess with your mind. Uh, he wants you to understand. He put it in the written word so we can understand as a body, as a group, uh, particularly in those days that he writes about, right? So in the days of ancient Israel when he sent the prophets obviously that audience was the main focus but also it would apply going forward so um, one of those things that I, I never really even considered it's it's kind of been a I, I don't want to say a revelation but it's been a new understanding um, and it hasn't been nice it hasn't been um, a great joy okay to to come to this to see it over and over and over again um, usually in person, right? Um, in the local church setting or with your, you know, your, your, your friends, IRL in real life. I'll try not to do the air quotes tonight. I'll, I'll try to be good on that. I'm sorry. Um, but it's this, it's this very understandable, um, but yet forbidden. Okay. I think a uh, practice that we, believers have of again i i'm not, i'm only talking about people who i know and the circles i'm in i'm certainly not speaking for every christian in the world definitely not um but many of us um see the the darkness of the world around us and it is like we said at the top um it is very dark obviously if you have any spiritual if you have any holy spirit uh discernment in you at all you know it's dark out there and it's getting darker fast but that's not enough you know that's not where um our witness ends that's not even a witness really that's just showing how bad it's getting but that's not our calling right so hopefully we can see what God is trying to tell us, all of us here, in this one. And I'm calling this one, What Business Is It Of Mine To Judge Those Outside The Church? Pastor Manti, what are you talking about? I don't judge anyone. Okie dokie. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. Please open your Bibles or just look at your screen. I wrote to you, obviously this is Apostle Paul to the Church of Corinth, the believers there assembled, uh, just like you are right now. I wrote to you in my letter, not to, he might as well be talking to you, right? Not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral or the greedy or swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave the world. Saying, no, no, I know the world is like that. But now, now I'm writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, but 
is sexually immoral or greedy or an idolater or a slanderer, a drunkard or a swindler. Do not even eat with such people. Do what business is it of mine, Paul, or yours as a Christian? What business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. That's a quotation from, um, oh boy, Deuteronomy 17, I believe. Check that later. Somebody check it for me. You guys are smart. What's the point of that? He didn't write uh, the Bible and Apostle Paul and, and the words of Jesus, God's word on this in the uh, end times or any other time, is not to tell you how bad it is in the world. I was telling you, don't associate with the sexually immoral people because they had a problem in Corinth, okay? Um, But he says, I'm not talking about the people in the world who are immoral, greedy, swindlers, idolaters. You'd have to leave the world if you don't associate with them. Just like now, I, I'm i going for, I don't live in a big town, but to most people it may be, yeah, it's a suburb, okay? And uh, and it's it's pretty nice. Um, not super rich or anything, but it's nice. And uh, are we going for a walk as a family around town? And um, you'd walk past, uh, you know, especially now with the, the whole pride issue, right? The flags and, oh my gosh, how many colors are on these things now? Uh, I used to... Right, it used to be a couple of of stripes, and now it's like forty five colors. Um, we went by one, you know, there's one uh, apartment or townhome, whatever you want to call it, uh, with a bunch of little flags out there. Okay, that's that's that person, and and you see two, and they had a little thing. Okay, um, and yeah, was it yesterday or the day before? Obviously, this issue's bubbling up in the our culture. For sure, and uh, now there's a whole new uh, um, house, home, apartment, whatever, with a ginormous pride flag. I did the air quotes. Sorry, uh, just hanging out for the world to see. It's huge, and it's again twenty million colors on it. So there's a cl- uh, obvious, clear um, attempt at i don't know escalation is that the right the right term um clearly there there's a a culture war happening and the the warriors are getting in in they're throwing themselves into this now we as christians know that it's wrong it's sexually immoral to be gay to practice homosexuality is to be sexually immoral among other sexual immoralities, okay, but that is one, and there's no debate. Don't trust anyone who tells you it's in the Bible that it's okay to be homosexual and a Christian. Ain't no such thing. I mean, you can believe, but you're not practicing righteousness. And again, we have personal experience at my local church about, you know, a homosexual lady who, who seemed very nice and a believer and worship God and all. And she wanted to get married in our church to a woman. We said, no, we can't do that. Right. And, and the, pro, the um, kicker of it is she told us she knows it's wrong. She knows it's a sin, just can't stop it or won't stop it or something. Right. So at, at a, when she get to the brass tacks of it, yeah, we know, but Here's the thing. They're not like most often. Okay. Most often that type of thing, that attitude, the in your face, the Bible's a hate book and all that stuff. Obviously they're not saved. They're lost, lost. They're people of the world. So when, when Paul says don't associate with them, he's not saying go form a Christian, um, you know, 
commune somewhere where it's only people you agree with or all move to Florida. Sorry, Kim, uh, just threw that out there because a lot of people think that's what you do. Yeah, or Texas, it used to be Texas, right? Florida now, or it'll be another place where, oh, it's only the, you know, the good Christians live there or something and all the evil world is in the other states. Come on. First of all, it's dumb. Okay, it's bogus. It's not true. And even if it was, what would Jesus have to say about that exactly? Who said to go run away from the lost? That's not our job. Um, but the point is, and that the underlying part there is why the title is what it is tonight. Right? What business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? It's not Paul's business. It's not my business. It's not Chris Anderson's business or yours or your pastors, or anybody else's, to judge those who are not believers. We know it's bad. We know it's dark. Expel the wicked from among you. In other words, uh, this is actually coming back to their particular issue, and uh, let's get it right in the church. Okay, that's his point. Because judgment begins at the house of God. That's us. That's why he judges us first. That's why we have to get through the judgments on the church before the trumpet judgments, for example, in the book of Revelation. That's why the second and third chapters happen before the rest. Those are the seven churches. Kim is saying we are full, meaning Florida. Yes, please stop coming. Um, all right, so that's the source scripture, but there's more. 2 Timothy chapter 3 is what obviously many of us see as occurring right before our faces um, right now. And many, many, rightly so, many churches are saying, hey, look, this is happening right now. Um, clearly, it's they're not. you don't have to be a genius to figure this out. And when it says the last days, this will happen, here it is. Uh, let's go for what version that I want to do. I don't know. New King James is fine. Okay. Perilous times, right? Know this in the last days. Perilous times will come or dangerous times or um, terrible times. People will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, without forgiveness, slandering, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power wanted to put that in an alternate translation. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Okay. Um, I want you to make sure we're correctly identifying who, when it says these men or these people, Make sure we know who we're talking about, because a lot of folks right now are saying, oh, yeah, 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 definitely. I see all the, the evil sinners out there. They're doing all that stuff. That's a sign of the last days. There's more and more of them. Yeah, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers. Oh, yeah, that's the other guys. For, verse 6, for of this sort are this, this group of people, they are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. Uh, let me do an alternate version of this one. They insinuate themselves into households and captivate weak women who are overwhelmed with sins and led along by various passions. Such women, who, who, who are these and who are these women? Such women are always seeking instruction, yet never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jamvries opposed Moses, so these people, or some say these men, or these teachers, 
these teachers have warped minds and are disqualified in the faith also who oppose the truth. Disqualified in the faith or are counterfeits. They have a counterfeit faith or are charlatans. Are rejected as far as the faith is concerned, but they will not get very far because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. Those men, meaning Janus and Jambres. Okay, so we've got men, certain men, people, they, these men, these teachers, all talking about the same thing. You, however, Timothy, know all about my teaching, Paul, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, patience, love, endurance persecution, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who does want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and imposters, evil people, evildoers, imposters, charlatans, will go from bad to worse. This is a sign of the end deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue, believers, you, me, continue in what you have learned and become convinced of and have become convinced of because you know from whom you have learned it and how from infancy or from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scriptures God breathed in useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Or God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. That's what we're doing right here. We're being prepared and equipped right now, but I want us to understand who this is talking about. Who are these men, these people, these they, these men, these teachers, these evil, these imposters, these charlatans? Why would they be an imposter or a charlatan if they're unbelievers? They have a counterfeit faith, but they have faith. They says they have an appearance of godliness, but they're just not all the way. They're, they're interested in deceit. They're interested in doing their own thing. They're interested in lying, in slander, in all the things in the first couple of verses, boastful, proud, Disobedient, ungrateful, unloving, unforgiving, no self-control. These are not the world. That's not a, it's, Paul's not saying the signs of the end, in the last days, there'll be a lot of lost people around. Oh, well, so? Well, how does that help me? How does that rebuke, exhort, teach me anything? Of course, lost, the lost are going to be do all those things that are listed. That's what they do. If you're not born again, if you're not regenerated, if you're not born of the Spirit, if you don't have the mind of God, if you don't know the will of your Father, if you don't know the person of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, in your heart, personally, if you don't have communication with the God of Israel, that you don't know what you're even doing is bad half the time. You do it because you want to, because you're lost. The lost are lost. They're going to do the things of the lost person. They will sin on top of sin on top of sin. The end time danger that that is speaking of in Timothy is not from the lost, who will do evil, as always. That is what Corinthians would call those outside the church. The lost are those outside the church. What does Paul say that we are to do with them? You are no one to judge them. Only God has a role in judging them. You don't. You don't get to say how bad and evil they are. We know. God knows, okay? All we can do is preach the gospel to save them.
they're outside the church. We can't judge them. We can't say how terrible the, this and that is. I mean, you're, it's a waste of time. We're not getting anywhere. We're not exhorting or teaching or, or building up or, or growing the church. We're not doing any of that. But those who claim salvation in Christ, those within the church, is the danger that Timothy's talking about, or Paul's talking about in 2 Timothy 3. And it's the, um, the ones that are inside the church that are the sexually immoral, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in 1 Corinthians that we read about before. That's what we have the right to address. And again, I'm not just making this like because I feel like it. It happens all day long. Okay, I go to I go about my day, you go about your day. And whether it be local believers in your, you know, your local church building or you're just at the grocery store, whatever, and I'm thinking about bond serving here, just going to the store, you run into a lot of people. Um yeah, it's getting it's bad out there, man. The world's going to hell in a handbasket. Oh, it's getting worse and worse. I know. And, okay, and what? How does that change anything for me as a Christian? Or you as a Christian? Coming to a... And this isn't just a local church issue. It's a it's an internet issue for sure. Okay, even Christian sites and and pages and 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 whatever um, groups come together to complain. Oh, Islam is the worst. Can you believe how bad they are? The homos are the, you know the homosexuals are the worst. Can you believe how what they're doing? Can you believe the drag queens? Look at all this evil. Look at all the abortion. Isn't this? Yeah, it's it's, ba- it's the worst. But that's not a danger to your salvation. That's not a danger to your spiritual health. If you're right in Christ, this the hell gates of hell won't prevail. There's nothing that can affect you. There's nothing that can affect your children if they're saved, if they're rooted and grounded. If they're, I mean, the, the parable of the four soils. Okay, that's always in in play. Okay, like who receives the gospel and. Uh, do you have roots to hold on when you're persecuted or do you get choked out by the world and riches or self-indulgence or are you actually obedient and fruitful? Um, But the point is that that's between you and Jesus. There ain't no other people in there. There's no other influences, right? If you receive the gospel, that means Satan didn't come and take it away. You heard it and believed it and put it in your heart. Between you and God now. In your soil. Okay, right? Your soil. Um, so this is the danger. The da- only danger to our souls is being l- misled and drawn away by those who would feed the flesh even though they say they are in the spirit. And to lead you away from Christ even though they say they're Christians. And all of a sudden we're talking about everything except how to serve Jesus better. Look at this, the abortion issue. Yeah, it's the worst thing. But look at this. This is an example of what I'm saying. Um, this is from a very detailed study that came out from the Guttmacher Org, which is a private, very um, relied upon, you know, not a government organization, but someone who really gets to the bottom of uh, abortion and um who's getting them and why stuff like that uh one of the detailed reports they put out it's been a while now nine years ago but listen to this 17 percent of abortion patients in 2014 identified themselves as mainline protestant uh, your big protestant denominations your um whatever your big churches 13% is evangelical Protestant. That's more your smaller churches, your independent churches, your even maybe your end time church, in your opinion. Okay. 
13% are that. These are people, women who have had abortions in one year. 24% is Catholic. But wait a minute. The, out of all the churches, the Catholic church, they say what you will, but there is, they are consistently and annoyingly to the pro-abortion people. They are the greatest pro-life group in the world. I mean, like consistently. And yet, look. While 38% reported no religious affiliation and the remaining 8% reported some other affiliation. There's the link if you want to check me out. What does that mean? Add, the, add it up. 17% plus 13% plus 24%. That's 54% of abortions were done by self-identified Christians. And this is assuming that no one lied that that you actually are a christian and you said oh no 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 i'm one of these eight percent I, I i don't i don't or i'm some other weird thing or i'm 38 percent. yeah i don't have religious affiliation but yet you go to church every week so at least at least 54 percent. that means there's more abortions in the church than outside of it So when I'm saying, when Paul is teaching us, do not, you have no right. We, who am I to say to anybody outside the church to judge them? We know abortion's evil, but guess what? The real issue is we Christians are not only doing it, we're doing it more than the non-believers are. This is the danger. This is what we're warned about. That Christians ourselves would get to the point where we're killing our own children in a Holocaust. But somewhere between 800,000, 900,000 per year, every year in one country. That's just my country. 800,000 minimum last year and the year before and the year before and the year before. And now that, oh, Roe versus Wade has been overturned, you would think they're all gone now. No more abortion. Yeah, right. This is a um, an example, more than an example. This is in our face of what God is talking about. There's more evil. This is the judgment that we can do. This is what are we doing here? This is where are we being drawn off to? We're, we're supposed to be ready for Jesus. All we're doing is complaining about this and that, and yet we are getting more abortions than non-believers. It shouldn't be even 1%, and it's 54 You know what I'm saying? There's never any permission given by Jesus, and there's never any excuse that we could invent for us not to obey the Sermon on the Mount, for example. Right? Seems simple? Yes, amen, definitely, brother. Yeah, no problem there. Mm. Yet, the rebellion against the simple commands of Jesus, even in that this one passage, this one chapter, basically, or one plus chapter, we can't do it. We can't do it. We can, we can't even not kill our children. And this, I'm not talking about the. I'm talking about abortions. We can't murder our. We can't not murder our children in the womb. And you think women are the only one uh, uh, accountable to this? They're not. What do you think the, the dads of these children, you think they're all against it? No way. You think the parents of the women uh, who get pregnant? And by the way, it's all full of lies. If you go through that this information, go to this link or, or other um, studies, it's all a lie about under you know super young girls uh, getting the abortions. They're not. This is all people in their 18, 19, and 20s, up to 30 years old. This is your average abortion uh Mom,
but we can't help to re- but rebel. Let's look at Matthew chapter 5, just in this one segment. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. What does is, what is Jesus call the ch- seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3? The lamp, the seven lampstands. One lampstand with seven lamps. Put it on the lampstand. The, we are the, the light on the seven candle menorah. Supposed to be seven churches. But put it on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. What's the house? The temple of God. You are the temple of God if the Holy Spirit lives in you. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Darkness is growing. It is, of course. Kicker is God ordained it. God has ordained that the darkness grows. God has God has allowed and then some that evil is everywhere. He knows. He's not no one's surprising God. This is the plan. But how are you reacting as a Christian? What is are your how's your heart? Are we unfaithful? Are we unforgiving? Are we unloving? Like Timothy says. Are we only focused on oh, how would the evil the unbelievers are today? That's not only that a that's not just a waste of time. That's that's doing the devil's work. You're you're not just sidelined. You're actually working for the other team now, because your witness, quote unquote, is not about the gospel at all. It's about how wicked everyone is and how how we got to save the my country or save the day or. or save Target or whatever, instead of actually doing the gospel. That you're a sinner just like them once. That you needed Jesus just as bad as they ever did. That the worst jihadi terrorist or homosexual uh, you know, flag waver was no more guilty than you were. That's the gospel. And yeah, we've got to set ourselves apart by not getting tied down in these lies. God has ordained that the darkness would grow, but our job has not changed and will not change. Like the prophets say, be blessed by the prophets, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth. This is God speaking to you. There is no, God, he says it shall happen. You're not going to stop it. You're not supposed to stop it. You witness one at a time. And deep darkness, the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. Now, ultimately, obviously, this is talking about a, the light himself in Jerusalem. And the nation streaming to it for the true Torah, the true law of God, the law of love. But until then, darkness will cover the earth. You cannot stop it. It's ordained. Deep darkness, the people. But the Lord will rise over you. Come to your light, the brightness of your light. Jesus just said, you are the light of the world. This is the light that the Gentiles shall come to and the kings of the earth shall come to. Not You don't go to them. You, do, you don't, you don't uh, follow after them like a fan boy or a fan girl with your T-shirts on. They come to you. They're the lost ones. Even, they, even if they claim to be believers bogusly, and you know what I'm talking about. They come to us to see Christ, the truth, the light, and the way, and the life. Daniel 12, 3, but the wise, and hopefully this is us, the masculine, the wise will shine like the brightness of the heavenly expanse. And those bringing many to righteousness will be like the stars 
forever, forever. And Jesus would even say this too, like a torch burning, shining in the kingdom of your father. That's our job. To be light. And, and if once we have it, um, not to hide it, <laughs> not to hide it. All right, great. I'm saved. I'm done. You know, I'm out. I'm just going to complain about how bad it is out there. That's what I'm telling you. I'm th- I have people in my mind. This is what happens every time I see him. Boy, it's bad out there. Boy, it's really going to collapse today. Boy, did you see this and that? Enough. Enough already. Please enough. Okay. Um, any questions from anybody about any of this or any other thing? I'd be happy to take it here. Let's see. Bond server would make some comments earlier. Uh, I think we may have many people wanting to chime in here. Uh, whoever does not believe this, who stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. Oh, that's John 3. Yeah. That's right. Uh, I think the Second Timothy passages are the world, but it seems to reference the state of the church, the tares. Yeah, well, it definitely does. Danger comes from apostates. Example, Jesus warns they will do what they do, thinking they're doing a service to God. We're on the same track. Okay, good. Um, there's a prayer request. Phil, blessings. Hello, Jesse. Bless the Lord. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't seem very difficult to to know what Paul's referring to in these things. Um, He saw the problem. It's not a new issue, right? It's 2,000 years old from the first first churches, the very first ones. um, Same issues are going on, okay? So don't don't get in the dumps about it if this is convicting you. Um, it's, It's common, okay? In other words, it's happened to a lot of folks. But it's not okay either, okay? (laughs) Right? It's not okay to stay there. Now, once we know, oh my gosh, um, I've slipped into this, or or I'm part of a you know part of a church that has slipped into this, and we don't do the gospel anymore. Um, It's an issue. It's a big issue, and I, I'm really what did I call this? Yeah, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? I'm going to take that to heart, okay? I'm going to apply that. Um, spread it all over uh, my walk with the Lord from this point on. And um, I get it. You know, you want to do it. It makes you feel good, maybe. Uh, like, this is like part of our job to call this out or or to... No. Remember, who's our enemy? Right? Who's the darkness that really that we're talking about? Spiritual enemies in the heavenly places, right? Principalities and powers, and Satan and the fallen angels, the demons, the evil spirits, wicked, evil, unclean spirits, whatever you want to, however you want to address it, however you want to deal with that. That's the enemy, right? There's a reason why we're told that people are not the enemy, even though they do evil things. They don't know what they're doing. Like, Jesus said, like Stephen said. It doesn't say how Paul went out, but he probably went out similarly. And Peter, and all the except for John, maybe all the rest of the 12. 11. Ah, uh, right? They don't know what they're doing, Father. Because they don't. That's the world. That's the lost. Is that you? You can't avoid this. That you'd you'd, avoid, you'd have to be taken out of the whole world, which we know is not what God has for us. We're supposed to go to the world to bring the better way, the offer of pardon in our case, because we need to be pardoned. Otherwise, we'll be rightly judged to be guilty before God of many, many, many sins, and none are good, not even one. No, not even one can stand before God. So that's the message, right? That's what we have to um, remember, no matter how dark it gets. And guys, like, posted this earlier today. 
even let's say sake of argument okay that um the 70th week of daniel the, the final seven years of the age all that stuff it happens it starts tomorrow let's just say it starts tomorrow which it won't it's more to come before that starts but let's just say it starts tomorrow We're going to have a lot of hard darkness to deal with, and it's getting progressively and exponentially worse as we go on before the Lord comes. It's not going to, to paraphrase uh, Pastor Randy Scott, it ain't going to get any better. It's never going to turn around in that way. The world is not going to all of a sudden wake up and have a, Revelation of Christianity is the way and the truth and the life. And boy, I really messed up. Not going to happen. One soul at a time. That's the program. That's the program. It's been the program since the very beginning. The Great Commission itself. You individually go out to the whole world. Right? So do that. That's, That's the way it works. It won't work another way. He who comes in another way is a liar and a thief. Can't do it any other way. So that's the program. Get with the program. Um, it's going to get darker, guys. Way darker. Yet we've got. Remember, every day that the that the 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 final seven years doesn't start, you've got more than seven years of darkness to come, and it's progressively worse. The end of the process is the darkest of all. Even though we've got a great promise of um, what you would call a. Um, um, an awakening, a uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, a revival, whatever you want to call it, during those that great tribulation time. Yeah, there's an answer, but even at that, the, there's, there's nowhere that says this is a great, you know, billion soul harvest. It just means those who are faithful get the great power from on high, like the, um, like the Acts chapter two moment. So it's gonna be tough. And if we can't deal with this, if we can't, how are you going to run with the horses? Right? <sighs> Got to batten it down, friends. Batten it down tight. And it's the, the church is the problem. Get, clean out the house. That's what God's saying. Clean out the house, starting with you, starting with yourself. Do not think you're immune. Do not try to pawn it off on someone else. Don't tell you the troubles in your house are my wife's problem or my son's issue. Take responsibility and then move forward knowing that the church of God is facing judgment right now. God is doing this right now to us to, to cleanse the bride for his spotless son. Um, Kim says the world is under the delusion on the enemies lies just as we once were, right? It should be on our heart's desire to be a witness to the good news that we, and they can be pardoned. That's the facts. We had, um, we had a training on Saturday with, um, an evangelist guy who does street evangelism, goes into major cities and goes block to block. And however the Lord leads him, he goes and takes tracks. Yep the track guy and he takes a bunch of Bibles and whatever happens, happens. And he just tells someone new about Jesus, tells someone about the Lord, tells them in the um, Ray comfort method. If you are familiar with him um, pointing out the sin problem that we all have. And if you think you're a good person getting to heaven, it ain't going to work out. You need to be pardoned. You need that him to pay your fine, to pay, to bail you out, to pay your bail. Uh, as it were, right? Because Judgment Day is the court date. Um, this is why we have to be in the world, walking with the Spirit, or hard or grow cold. That's right. That is correct. It's God doesn't say things super, superfluously for no reason, or because He wants to hear Himself talk. It's because it works, and it's the only way it's going to work. Right? Okay, I'm repeating myself now. But this is an important thing to get straight. Really, really, really is. Um, I just thought of a, a quick anecdote. 
on this, but maybe I shouldn't say it because I can't remember it. Um, anyway, all right, guys, enough said, enough said. So end time prepping is real and it's happening right now. Uh, the church around the world is experiencing it in some way. Some of them are just flat out persecution and um, people are denying Christ. Some of them are not. Everyone is remaining faithful, even in these, you know, we'd love to hear the heroic, you know, stories from other lands in India and Pakistan and China and, <clears throat> Afghanistan, it's Iran and all that stuff that everyone who's a believer stays a believer unto death. Well, it's not true. And um, that that dynamic continues to the very end. Those in churches won't listen. Again, yes. Um, that's why we're here. That's why God, and that's one of the reasons, why God has launched this ministry, for example. And that's why you need to support it and be a part of it um, and share it and be a member and all that stuff because it's not for no reason. It's not superfluous. It's not just because it's a different way to do it. It's because it's necessary. It's because if we're full of, you know, if this land, whatever land you're in, is full of churches who won't listen, who won't um it's not that we're anything. It's not that the bond servant or me or you is anything. It's just that we know what God is doing. And sometimes our fellow Christians are have their fingers in their ears. La, 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 la. Uh, comfortable. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to think about this. Um, I don't want to do what I actually have to do. I just want to complain or whatever the deal is. Yeah, it's real. It's a real issue. And that's why we're here. We're here and that's why there'll be other um, expressions of of gathering with the saints around the world who know what's happening and who are actively uh, uh, undergoing and appreciating the chastisement and judgment of God. Right? Because that means he loves us and we're his children. Uh, James tells us that. Other, other places tell us that, that we should be happy, actually, when we are corrected. And as the church, so to Israel, they're going to go through the same thing. That's what Jacob's trouble is about. They have to go through that. And they will only those who will appreciate that because they're God's children. and They're being called out to be his sons and daughters. That's his special nation as the Jews, as their destiny to appreciate the even, yes, the hard correction and chastisement of Jacob's trouble that those who would come through that would know and understand the Messiah loves them and uh, is willing to forgive everything. Amen? Amen. All right. So even though many friends or people that we have in our circles won't listen, uh, be obedient. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Speak in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Speak in the Spirit because that's why He's here. He's here to help us. He's here to teach us. He's here to remind us. Um, if we're about the father's business, we can't go wrong. It's going to come. His word goes out to how he intends it. And it's going to do the work it's sent to do. We most of the time don't even see where it goes, right? We don't know what the result is. Ultimately, we just have to be about being faithful. That's what he cares about. Who is faithful? Who can we send, right? Here I am. Send me. So that's why we're here. Hopefully you've been blessed by this. If you have, please give. Uh, through the app or through the site. Uh, it's completely secure. You have different um, options to give regular ways, cryptocurrencies, PayPal, whatever works for you. So uh, please uh, think about doing that and pray and just obey. And let's proceed from here on out. Lord willing, we'll be here again uh, next Monday night and pray about um, the seed that has uh, been planted for specific prayer services during the week uh, maybe q a times or you know special trainings again another point during the week and discipleship if you're a man or a woman without discipleship if you don't or you're not being discipled by another 
mature believer. And if you don't have someone that you are discipling who's younger in the faith, then you that's something we've got to correct. So let's be about that. Pray about it. Till next time for Pastor Anderson for Taryn and everyone here at End Time Church, Pastor Christopher Manti saying, be about the Lord's work. You know, at your father's business, you will never regret it. 